Hi there, welcome back. I'm Professor Hank, and in this video we're going to look at assembly data definition statements. Let's begin. So with data definitions, we have a situation where in assembly programming, a data definition statement allocates memory for a variable. They have the following syntax. We're gonna have some name followed by a directive initializer um, and potentially additional initializers that are separated by commas. The variables are based on assemblies built in data types. And this code is gonna be added in the data segment of the assembly program. All right, so what are directives? A directive is a command similar to preprocessor directives in C++. They are used to define variables, macros, and procedures, known as functions in other programming languages. Some sample directives are .data, dword, or end, p. All right, so let's take a look at the intrinsic data types, right? These are the equivalent uh, data types in other languages. In assembly, what we actually end up doing is we end up using these intrinsic data types to allocate memory for storage of values. Okay, so here are some types or a subset of the types that we can have. There are more than these, but we'll just stick with a few simple ones just to keep the complexity level low. So byte is an 8-bit unsigned integer. This is for storing an integer that is no more than 8 bits long. S byte is for 8-bit signed integers. A word is a 16-bit unsigned integer. An S word is a 16-bit signed integer. D word, which stands for double word, is a 32-bit signed integer. And SD word is a signed double word, which is a 32-bit unsigned integer. And the one floating point data type that we'll look at is real4, which is a 32-bit IEEE, IEEE short real. Okay, so what's an initializer, right? We mentioned initializers when we looked at the syntax briefly. So initializer, at least one of these things is gonna be required in a data definition, even if it's just zero. Multiple initializers are gonna be separated by commas. For integer data types, initializers are integers matching the size of the variable's type. A question mark is used to ask the initializer if the variable is to remain uninitialized. Right, so initializers are values that we are going to set our variable to. Okay. All right, so here are some example data definitions. These are variables that we are creating, right? So here's a snippet of code in the data segment of the assembly program is where we're going to define our different variables. So let's just go through this list briefly. So we have alpha, we've defined a variable named alpha, which is a byte, and we have a single initializer, which is the character literal A, right? And character literals are characters that are specified with single quotes or double quotes. Okay, we have a variable named beta, which is of type double word, and it has a single initializer, zero. So beta is a variable that's been initialized to zero. We've got a variable gamma, which is a signed byte. So we've initialized it to negative 128. We've got a variable named delta, which is a word, right, which means that it's 16-bit. It's a 16-bit variable. And that question mark means that we're going to go ahead and leave it uninitialized. So it's got some kind of garbage value in it. Remember that with uh, when we're defining variables, we have to have an initializer of some kind, right? So question mark is what we can specify if we want to leave it with some garbage value, okay? Epsilon, type byte. Now here we have an example of three initializers in the series that are separated by commas. Essentially, epsilon in this case is what an array looks like in assembly. So we've got a three byte array essentially that contains the values 10, 20, and 30. Zeta is a variable that is an array of bytes 
And here we are initializing it with a string, right? So this is how we can create a string literal, essentially. So zeta is the string that we're assigning to this variable. And notice that we've got zero at the very end of this thing, right? Because zero is going to be our null terminator. So we've created essentially a five element array, right? Where we've got Z, E, T, A in each element and then zero in the last element. Okay, and so we have eta, which is going to be a array essentially. And here with the dupe command, we're essentially saying that eta is gonna have 50 elements that are bytes and each one of those elements is going to be initialized to zero. Dupe has a special job in this instance where we're, initial, we're able to say, hey, for each one of these elements, let's go ahead and, and store zero in, in, inside of these elements. Okay, we've also got variable theta, which is a signed word, right, which is a signed 16-bit variable. And we've assigned to it negative 32,768. So signed basically means that we can have a negative sign, right? Without the uh, variable being a, a signed type, we would only be able to store values from zero through, you know, some positive number. We can't have negative values in unsigned data types. Okay, and iota is our example for a floating point variable, right? We're using that real for intrinsic data type, and we've initialized iota to negative 3.1415. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize what we've covered in this short video. We took a look at data definition statements. We examined their syntax. We examined a subset of intrinsic data types. Again, there are more data types than what we've looked at here, but we want to keep that subset small for, for right now. We define directives and what they are. And we saw examples of declaring variables in an assembly program. Okay, great. So if you found this video useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that like button it really helps the channel out. Or if you thought this video was just complete crap, feel free to hit that, that thumbs down button too, right? It's, it's, it's completely up to you. As usual, if you're a student of mine, please feel free to stop by my office hours or shoot me an email if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.